So one of the techniques, one of the tools that we have is that of creating a data warehouse. Now this course is not a data warehousing course, but I'm going to use the term data warehouse in the next couple of videos and throughout the course in certain situations because SSIS and data warehouses just fit so perfectly together. So a data warehouse is often that place where you bring everything together. You know, to have quality data, to have quality reports, to be able to make informed decisions quickly and get consensus, you've got to have a single way to access the data. So we're going to be able to, with this data warehouse, or a data warehouse, collect and we'll have a schedule that runs to maybe collect all this data from all these different sources and store it in a central repository, right? So we got to load the data warehouse. Very common term. We've got to load the data warehouse here. Okay? So we're connecting up to all these different service uh, data sources. And in some cases, we might be only getting the changes since the last time we loaded this data warehouse. Like if we're loading this once a week on Sunday morning, we don't, and, and let's say that we have to deal with a 250 gigabyte database, we don't want to load the entire 250 gigabytes every week. We only want to load the changes since last week. That's what an incremental update is. You heard me use that in that last video, the intro video. Okay? The incremental changes. A delta, you might also uh, hear me use that term delta, right? Just the changes since the last time we did that particular load. Right? Now we also are very often going to have to deal with data quality issues. We want to make sure that we're consistent Okay, so we have data scrubbing. We have consistency, consistency checks that we go through. Like It's very common that in one database system you use, uh, like I just happen to use this USA, U period, S period, S period, uh, A period thing here. In Oracle, you store a country in one format because that's what the application did. Okay. But now the SQL Server database uses a different format because those are different developers and they chose U period, S period, A period. So when it gets to the data warehouse, you don't want to have to write your queries to deal with all these different varieties of USA. So you want consistency. You want it all to be United States. You have to transform that data as it is extracted from Oracle you transform it from USA into United States when you load it into the data warehouse. You extract it from SQL Server and you extract only the U period, S period, A period parts and then you transform it into United States when you load it into that data warehouse. So the data quality issue we're going to have to cover quite extensively in this course. The more data sources you have, the more different groups of companies, of vendors, of developers, of consultants who wrote an application, wrote a database, designed a tool, they're all going to do it differently and we have to get it all consistent. Right? Garbage in, garbage out. Right? So SSIS, to bring it full circle back to talking about integration services, it's the perfect tool for this kind of work. Okay? It connects to lots of different types of data sources and it can copy and it can move the data. It can also do that extensive data quality procedures, data scrubbing, uh, consistency checks, uh, throw out the garbage, change the garbage, aggregate. It can do all kinds of things that we need to, particularly related to data quality. Right? So tell you what we're going to do. Let's talk a little bit more about it in the next video. One of the things, if this is your first uh, learning, uh, Learn at First course here, you'll learn or notice that I tend to chunk things into about a, anywhere between 7 to 15 minute videos. And I do this on purpose. Uh, the first and primary reason is that when I'm sitting around watching a video, that's about my... Um, What's the word? Um, I'm sure you, it's uh, come to you. My attention span. Sorry. <laughs> okay. Let's 
spaced out there for a second. So my attention span is about that. I got my telephone. I got a phone call coming in, an email. I want to check the web, etc. So I try to break it into chunks for one reason for attention span. But the second reason I do it is one of my problems that I always had with online video courses is that you had to watch them in particular order. And I don't read technical books necessarily in the order they're given to me. I want to be able to jump around, find the one thing that I need, read 15 minutes, 30 minutes, get what I want, put it down and get to work, be productive. And I couldn't have done that if this course was an hour and a half or an hour and a half chunks. So by putting them into little 10 minute chunks, let's say, it makes it to where you can come back to this and quickly just get the one or two things that you need. So. I know it's probably going to be a little disjointed in certain places throughout the course when I say, okay, next video, let's stop right here. But the focus is on making it reusable for you down the line so that a year from now, six months from now, you can come back to this and still take advantage of it without having to watch the whole course. So I hope you dig it. I'll see you in the next video.